So yesterday I got a surprise. Just finished uh, doing a little thing with uh, Jacob and um, finally going to practice. And I gotta tell you, like, Jacob's a nice guy, but kind of getting tired of him a little bit. Anyway, it's, it's just good to have some time alone in the uh, practice space. Hang on. Sounds like there's somebody playing in here. Just a sec. Dude. I thought you uh, I thought you went back to London. It was fun, but you know, I thought maybe you're on your way back to London and already. Nah, dude, I'm still hanging out. I hope you don't mind. I'm just uh just playing some drums here. I mean, yeah, sure, great. Welcome. I mean, I hoped he was finally gone, but I decided to make the best out of it. Look, man, in all seriousness, as long as you're here, I do have something to ask you about. Because the truth is, I've been on something of a quest to play louder ever since my Eric Moore video. And seeing this video from David Cola. They're hitting the frickin' drums and their stick heights are above their heads. <laughs> and given that I'm partnering with Jacob Evans to run a coaching program, I thought I'd ask him for some pointers. Truth be told, man, I could I could use some help with playing loudly. You see, I've gotten into a lot of time and improvisation on this channel, but I haven't done a ton on technique. It's not that I don't think it's important, it's just that I haven't focused on teaching it as much as I eventually want to. But Jacob has. Here's a common mistake I see a lot of drummers make with their grip. So even though I was really hoping he'd left town by now, I mean, how do I put this, guys? He strangled me. Given that he's here, I guess I should steal some playing louder tips from that big brain of his. Today on 8020, Jacob Evans teaches me to play louder. Stay tuned. So guys, quick sponsor message. Today's video is brought to you by Jacob and me jointly. It's the drum flow slash 8020 drum coaching session. If you're watching this within a few days of release, it's possible that our coaching cohort is still open. If you click the link below the player, you'll get a completely free consultation call with Jacob where he'll evaluate your practice routine and help you eliminate your roadblocks. People tell me they've gotten a ton of value out of these calls, whether or not they ended up signing up for coaching at the end. Okay, that's it for the sponsor message. The first thing I wanted to ask Jacob was about the kick drum. Yeah, like since you're here, maybe I'll just play a little bit for you and see what pops out. What do you say? Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, man, sweet. Uh, I can see a couple of things there that we can take a look at, but uh, let me just sit down real quick and just give a bit of an overview of, of my general approach uh, to help you out. Love it. You see, Jacob's got a whole system for generating volume on the kick drum without stress or injury. Let's let him explain. Okay, so the way I like to think about technique is to just think about it in first principles, right? I don't necessarily want to do something technique wise just because someone else has done it. So I like to think of these three basic core principles that we follow that help us uh, make decisions as to what we should and shouldn't do. The first principle is to work with the mechanics of your body. We all more or less have the same body. We have the, the same similar range of motion, right? We want to move in a way that makes sense relative to how our body wants to move. The second principle is longevity. We want to follow the first principle for the purpose of playing a long career, right? You want to play injury free for your whole life. You want to play drums for as long as you can. So we want to make sure to, that we're avoiding lower back pain, that uh, you know we don't have blisters or anything like that, or, or just any tension in our body really at all. The third principle is that we want to do these things in order to serve what we want to be able to do on the instrument. Technique is just a means to an end. That's it. We're simply learning these techniques so that we can facilitate the ideas we hear in our head fluently on the drums in a safe way. 
So it's helpful to just split this into two categories, right? Lower body and upper body. And we're going to go through uh, some principles that you can follow for each. And we'll get Nate to sit back and uh, we can take a look at... Take a look at this on him or whatever the f I just want you to play like a basic beat and just try and play the kick drum nice and loud, nice and strong. Okay. Let's do this. I can do it, we can do it, we can do it. Okay, Nate, that's good. So there's two things I want you to think about here. Uh, the first thing is is seat height, right? There's a general, good general rule for uh, how high you should sit, which is what I call the 90 degree rule, which means the angle made at your hips and also the angle made at your knees should be equal to or greater than 90 degrees. So think about like this angle. Exactly. And then this so, angle. Exactly. So you want your hips to be above your knees and you want your knees to be above or behind your ankles. Mm -hmm. This can be accomplished one of two ways. Usually the easiest way is to just sit higher, right? Sit higher in the, in, in the stool and also sit a little bit further away from the drums. Yeah, that's cool. So if the seat doesn't go any higher, then what you can do is just like give yourself a little bit of distance to the drum. So what I'm seeing is uh, the, the hip angle is pretty good, but I think that you could sit a little bit further away and just uh, open up the, the knee angle a little bit. Yeah. All right, now let me show you a cool trick uh, for getting a bit more volume out of the bass drum. Okay, so again, remember tension is the enemy of flow, right? And a mistake I see a lot of people making is basically whether or not you're playing heel up or heel down, people will sit uh, with their legs up on the balls of their feet. Now, the problem with this is you're holding a whole lot of tension in your legs for absolutely no reason, right? So at rest in between strokes, your heels should be on the ground, right? You're completely relaxed at rest. So the secret to getting a nice loud stroke with the bass drum is using the weight of your leg in the stroke. So again, if we're cocked up on our feet and then we play a stroke with the bass drum, right? It's not, we're not really getting the full power that we can out of, out of the leg, right? So if we're at rest and we're utilizing the whole weight of our leg for that stroke, it's just going to be a much more efficient transfer of energy from our leg into the drum and it's just going to sound better. Next, I wanted to know how to play louder with my arms. So yeah, I also have trouble generating volume from my upper body and a lot of times I'll get tired or I'll get blisters. So I'm going to play a little bit of upper body stuff for you, upper body centric stuff, and you can just tear me to shreds. Yep. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, there's a couple of things that pop out to me. So let me sit down and show you. Let's do it. Okay, so the first thing is grip, right? Your grip actually looks looks pretty good, but we want to think about the same principles as with the leg. We want to utilize the larger muscle groups. There's many different branches that we can go down with grip, but just to keep things simple, right? I like to think about utilizing a more back of the hand centric grip, right? And what this does, right? When you actually think about Ripping the stick more with the back fingers, right? It actually opens up the front of the hand, right? And it's going to just result in kind of less tension, right? Less tension in the front of the hand. If you want to play loud and you want to do so safely, tension is the enemy. It's always the enemy. So if you open up the front of the hand a bit, right? And make sure that you're actually getting the weight of the stick is being thrown correctly and you're, you're utilizing, you know, even the elbow, like the wrists and elbow, there's not a whole lot of fingers with my technique really at all, right? A lot of big strokes. And again, it allows for that kind of efficient transfer of energy from our hands, from our arms into the drums to create the biggest sound that we can. So what I see with you specifically is 
um, again, like the grip is kind of there, right? Like the, the back of the hand grips there. But sometimes when you, you're making these strokes that are sort of like pronations of the arm, right? It's not going to be that strong, right? Because it's just like when you're kind of doing this, or especially when you go to the floor tom, it's okay to go like a French grip when you go over here, right? But you still kind of want to get the weight of the arm behind it. So instead of like, like kind of like that, right? Right? kind of allowing you to still get that weight. And I'm really thinking about that with whatever I'm hitting, whether it's a hi-hat, whether it's a ride, whether it's a tom. I'm really thinking about the throw of the stick and just getting the weight of my arm behind it. But I didn't want to leave off there because Jacob's also got a concept he talks about called the stadium concept. So I asked him about it. So Jacob, that's all great. I need to sit a little farther from the drum with the kick drum and I need to use the whole weight of my leg. And I, I need to work on this pronation thing so that the stick is kind of making a more direct straight line through um, my hand. And rather than pivoting my wrist, I'm going to unlearn everything every drum teacher I ever had told me and do what real life pros do and move the arm a little bit more. I just wonder, is there anything we can leave the people with when it comes to, in general, how you approach practicing loud conceptually? Yes, definitely. So something that you can implement with your practice right now is something that I call the stadium mindset. The idea behind this concept is really rooted in the fact that how you sound on the drums is really a result of how you practice. And we have to think about this mechanically with our technique as well. What the stadium mindset means is that you want to practice drums with the same intent and dynamics and confidence that you would in a real life musical situation. This is really important for technique because if, especially if you wanna play loud on geeks, right? You have to practice loud. Okay, Nate hopping back into the shot. Uh, quick question. So then how come everybody ever who teaches this like at the college level teaches you to play from the fingers and the wrist and like use use small muscle groups i think the best people to model your technique on are people who have been playing big venues that have been playing loud for a long time so usually what this means are you know session guys who are doing the biggest touring acts in the world because they're they have to be efficient with their movement because they're filling arenas with their sound right and you can see this with a lot of these guys. There's not a lot of intricate kind of finger movement when you see someone playing in Madison Square Garden, for instance. With whatever it is that you're practicing, whether it's like chops or like some groove stuff or whatever, you want to practice it in the way that you're actually going to use it. And this is especially important for something like chops because if you you know, you're going to be chopping out at the peak of some solo that you're in, right? But if you're sitting in the practice room going... And then you expect to be able to go when you're on the actual gig, it's not going to be there. So it means that when you're in the practice room that you're playing it exactly how you want it to sound if you were playing in a stadium in front of 10,000 people. And if it's something unfamiliar to you in the practice room and you can't do that, slow it down until you can. So good if I could play. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, um, we can we can put your B roll in. In all seriousness, guys, obviously Jacob and I are running a special joint coaching program. Um, it's a special joint cohort of his. It's an intensive coaching program that'll take you from where you are right now to breaking through your drum ruts and finally playing in flow. And right now, for a limited time, we're offering a completely free consult call with Jacob, where he'll look at what you're doing in your practice routine, and he'll break down where your blockers are. Whether you sign up for the program or not, everybody who's done these calls tells me they're amazing. You'll get a ton of value. But guys, this is only open for a limited time. By the time this video posts, there may only be a day or two left. So make sure you click the link below and sign up for a call before the deadline. Cool, man. Well, uh, I got to go soon. But like anything else uh, you want to talk about? Yeah, I wanted to ask you about some like time metronome stuff. Yeah, dude, we can totally do that. Shoot, but we're out of time. This video is already way over. Tell you what, guys, we'll do a video about time. We'll break it down. But let's do that video over on Jacob's channel. If you want to catch the time video, just click the link below the player and that'll take you over to the time video on Jacob's channel.
Well, I have to admit, you've helped my chops. Um, so, you know, it's okay if you stay and practice here today. I mean, you are going back to London tomorrow, right? Nah, 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 I live here now. What are you looking for? Batteries. Yes, thank you, we have batteries. So I can't snap anymore? Give yourself a bit of space. Don't think the still goes any higher. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, um, shit. Let me put my ear pods away, because bad luck.